This is our Forex blog for March 15th, 2012. And like we do most days, we buy the strongest currencies versus the weak, and we sell the weakest versus the strong. The, we statistically compare each currency to every other one using multiple time frames and multiple different tools. The histogram on the top measures five of our best statistical tools, which we then average together. This is one of the easiest ways for new traders to trade. If you see real-time strength, which is green, at and above the 80 level, and underneath that we have the daily, weekly, monthly trend when it's all lined up like that, you want to trade it versus one of the weakest ones, which is the yen uh, at this time of the day. Uh, let's scroll back and see what some of the other currencies look like coming up to midnight. The pound also uh, showed some weakness there. However, the weekly and monthly trend was pretty strongly up in the pound. But nonetheless, you could have um, sold the pound dollar and bought the dollar yen coming up towards midnight. So let's just take a look at the charts. Uh, pound dollar coming up to midnight. Notice it's falling. Uh, and buying the dollar yen coming up to midnight. Oh, actually, I don't have. This is, I don't typically trade the dollar yen myself, and I don't have it running. But we'll put it up on a chart real quick. Dollar yen coming up to midnight. You can see it went up during the pullback, went up again, and that's really the whole purpose of the currency meter is to have you focus on the ones that are most likely to trend. You can see today that the New Zealand uh, was strong all day. You'd want to trade that against. You know, the weakest one, the yen, has the weakest daily, weekly, and monthly trend. However, the real-time momentum today was to the upside. Sometimes they're so far down the previous day that our daily trend tools take a while to, to slowly change direction. If all the yen pairs were down uh, a massively amount the, the previous day, then it takes it longer for it to switch uh, trend direction. Um, but one of the weakest ones today was the CAD and also the pound. So... These are also pairs that we don't typically trade most days. You want to buy the New Zealand pound. Oops. Sorry. You want to sell the, uh, the pound New Zealand. And notice it just trends down all day long. And this is one of the best patterns right here. Extreme strength for an hour or two, followed by a pullback of about a half an hour, 10 hour, that has half the weakness that the uh, previous up move had. Coming up to 6.30 right here is a good time to look for a sell. You have a little bit of a pullback off the lows right here, and you can see when it finally breaks these lows, you go short, draw your fibs off the, the last little wave. And most of the time, as I've always said in our forage classes, a 1.618 is the end of the move. And you short this around um, 45 here, and you're out, out uh, down here at uh, 73. So that's a huge... 60-plus uh, pip move while risking 10 or 15 pips. Now, you could have also traded the New Zealand against the CAD. The New Zealand's on the top of this particular pair, so you're looking to buy the New Zealand CAD. And also note that pullback in the New Zealand here at 630. It is, not, is about half the weakness visually as the previous strength. Then it starts falling away and coming up a little bit before 7, you're looking to buy it. So, as you can see on the chart right here, There must have been uh, some data issues here. Let's see if we can reload this. Um, for whatever reason, there was some kind of data issues. But here's uh, 615, 710. You can see it starts to come, come up here. And you have the same exact pattern later today. 7 to 9, a lot of strength, followed by very little amounts of uh, weakness during the pullback. So coming up to 10, you're also looking to do the same. You can see this one's kind of going sideways right here. You buy the breakout around 81.10. You have your Fibonacci profit targets. And like I've said so many times in class and in our Forex blog, the 1.618, 70, 80% of the time is the maximum amount you're going to make. And most of us, when we have charts on here, we have our trailing stops. The trailing stop would have got hit somewhere at 35 to 31. And you can see the profit target uh, was up here at 43. So using the Fibonacci profit target, especially the 1.6181, in this case made you another you know, 8 to 10 pips from what the trailing stop would. And that makes a huge difference. Uh, if you got out of all nice trades like this at the 1.618 versus letting them come back down and hit your trailing stop, the few times where it goes above the 1.618 is going to give you a lot less additional profit than 
what you give back and, and the majority of the trades when it comes back down. So at the very least, when it hits the 1.6 or 8, you, want, you might want to get out of half your trade. And then if it comes down and hits the trailing stop, you have the second half. Or if it shoots up higher, just watch it. And any sign of, of a pullback, you know, look to get out. So you, the worst thing in the world is if you don't get out right here, shoots up another 20 pips or let's say 15 pips, and you don't catch those extra 15 pips, and then it pulls back down, and maybe you get out of the second half of your trade pretty much right at the 1.618. Uh, you know, you gave back all those extra 15 pips for no reason. Whenever you see a big spike uh, at and above, or, you know, pretty much right near the 100 uh, level, this is an extremely weak uh, currency right here. So you could, uh, especially after about 640 right there, buy the, uh, or I'm sorry, sell the Euro New Zealand coming up to 7. And you can see you got this little spike down right here. This one's coming up to the lows of the day. And when it breaks down right there, you want to draw your fibs on the last swing. And this is a perfect example of what happens that, you know, when the 1.618 gets hit, it pulls back, and it goes just a few pips underneath there. 77 versus... Uh, 89. So it goes 12 extra pips underneath there. And if you had a trailing stop on this, more than likely you would have got out somewhere up in here. Uh, this is exactly what I was referring to uh, by telling you and advising you that the 1.618, the majority of the time, is going to be your maximum profit. It may go a few pips beyond that, but by the time it comes back down and, and hits your trailing stop, you've given back more profit than you could have by just getting out to 1.618. You might bring up a range chart, a tick chart, or even a one-minute chart uh, right here. Uh, somewhere around 7.30, let's look at a one-minute chart. Notice on the one-minute chart, came back down here, goes sideways for a bit. You might want to get out of your trade here at um, 86 versus, uh, actually, the one minute chart this is pretty high volatility uh, currency, so more than likely you give back a good deal of that uh, additional profit as well. Today the dollar's strength and weakness was mixed, but usually when you see a lot of weakness followed by less strength, that weakness will resume. So coming up to uh, 410 right here, you can find a currency that's the strongest, and that would have been most likely the New Zealand. At 410, you want to be looking to buy the New Zealand versus the yen. Let me scroll forward. This is from yesterday's chart. I had it scrolled back for other reasons. Uh, 410, you can see this currency is above the hourly. You've got this little pullback right here, and it timed perfectly. You're in this trade here at 81.19. Your stop is underneath the low. You're risking less than 10 pips. And notice how our intelligent trailing stop got you out almost up at the high here, 81.40. You're in this trade around 18. You made 22 pips minus your spread. And notice when you're trading with the trend, on this pullback again right here, you're in when it, the trailing stop gets hit, 81.30, and you're out at 70. 40 pip profit. Now, I'll finish class today with just um, showing you our trade analyzer planner. 10 pips per day can do tremendous um, growth to your account. Getting 10 pips per day. You have a $2,000 account starting with, it pretty much doubles every two um, two months or eight weeks. You can see 8400 almost 18000 38000 you know, 40, 82000 and so forth. So you can see that by doubling your account every two months, uh, you know, tremendous growth in your account in one year by just getting 10 pips per day. So when you catch a nice trade like this that goes up 40 pips, you pretty much caught an entire week's worth of profit in one trade. So hold on to that profit. You know, Don't give it back. Usually when the market's gone up uh, way above our upper containment bands, it's going to have a deeper pullback, or at least it, it needs some time to digest those gains. So in other words, if you get a decent pullback, buy the pullback. But if it doesn't pull back at least 25, 30 pips when it's you know 20 pips above here, you might want to wait and see what happens. You can see it came pretty much slightly underneath the previous swing low right here and then started to go back up. This is a much higher probability trade. You're in somewhere around 60, and it looks like you're still in it, but you've locked in another 30 pips. So those two trades right there 
have an entire week's worth of profit, uh, you know, and if you have a few losses of five to ten pips, um, let's say you take six trades, three of them are losers, ten pips, ten pips, and six pips, 26 pips of losers, and maybe 15 pips of, of winners here, so you're down nine pips, you get another 30 pips here, you're up 21 pips on the day. And if you took this one, you're up 50 pips on the day, and you have a whole week's worth of profit when you've taken uh, six trades, 50% winning. Uh, the key is small losses and bigger wins. That's it.